Thank you, Professor Emeritus Shore. Ms. Maria Lees will now say a few words as this ceremony's valedictorian. Ms. Lees. Mr. Chancellor, members of the platform party, fellow graduates and guests, before I begin on the part of the graduating class, I would also like to acknowledge that we are seated here today on unceded land, which has historically been a part of the traditional territory of the Kenyan Kanhaka Indigenous Peoples. I would like to thank all members of this gathering for traveling to be with us on this day of celebration, including individuals of all cultures and backgrounds from across the world. Without each and every one of your journeys, the plethora of diversity we are immersed in here at McGill would not be nearly as rich. Fellow graduates, it seems like only yesterday we were tearing open our McGill acceptance letters in nervous anticipation wondering if we would be honored with the opportunity of pursuing a McGill education. Four years have passed since then, and I now stand before you with great privilege in saying, we made it. From the exhausting days and many, many tears shed at McLennan, the even longer nights we withstood at OAP, to the daily samosa hunts, we have succeeded in our journey to be seated here today as the graduating class of 2017. I would like to take a moment to reflect back on some of the experiences that got us here. I remember all the way back to first year, as we gathered in this very location, eagerly waiting in nervous anticipation for the one, the only, beach day. In second year, we witnessed the untimely slaughter of our beloved McLennan Tim Hortons by the corporate monster of Premier Moisson. Third year flew by in a blur, complete with the infamous smooth scandals, Fourth year was filled with memorable occurrences. It all began as we readily entered campus last September, expecting to take on our final year as seniors who knew this campus like the back of our hand, only to be confronted by the dreadful construction. We had literal physical obstacles between us and graduation as we attempted in vain to make it across campus in under 10 minutes. To further augment the barriers of fourth year, all books and necessary materials for success were removed from our campus and relocated a grand total of four blocks to the corner of Park and Prince Arthur. Thanks, management. <laughs> if trudging those four blocks through the ghetto between Park and Milton Gates with five textbooks strapped to our backs is not a statement of our tenacity and determination to graduate, I'm not sure what is. And last but not least, let us never forget March 15th, 2017, the first day since the great ice storm of 1998, the second largest natural disaster in Canadian history, that McGill shut down for a snow day. Thank you, McGill, for finally closing your doors during the equivalent of a natural disaster. <laughs> now, just as great as these wonderful moments are, it is equally important for us to reflect back on some of the struggles we have overcome. This degree came with a price, and I'm not referring to a simple monetary value, but a cost much steeper than that. We must acknowledge the grave tolls on our mental health that have affected every single graduate seated here today. I have witnessed friends and fellow peers crushed by the pressures of McGill. I have seen healthy individuals come into this school full of optimism and vigor, 
only to leave her four years later with anxiety, depression, and eating disorders. Although today is a day of celebration, we must also remember those who could not overcome these barriers and as such were not able to finish this journey with us. With that said, we must acknowledge the individuals we are forever thankful to for supporting us through these demanding past four years. First, thank you to all the student groups, volunteers, and activists at McGill for being there to support not only McGill and local communities, but national and global initiatives. Your continued efforts do not go unappreciated. Thank you to our professors, TAs, and invigilators for becoming our greatest role models and invaluable sources of knowledge and inspiration. Thank you to our primary and secondary school teachers who served as so much more than just educators, but became mentors, supports, and role models. Thank you to the peers and friends we have made here at McGill. These relationships are so much more important than the piece of paper that we'd received today. For together, we have learned how to embrace the McGill environment and from it, grow both as students and as people. Lastly, the most important thank you goes out to our parents, families, and communities who have supported us in every endeavor we have undertook since day one. Although the most deserving of our appreciation, you are the group that is most often invisible, but please know that not a single one of us could be where we are today without you. As we reflect back on some of the times that got us here today, I, and I'm sure many of you, are wondering what this degree will do for us tomorrow, in a month from now, or even 10 years down the road. How will we use this piece of paper to accomplish our hopes, our dreams, and our aspirations? I believe it is important for us to look to inspirational figures of our past to answer this question. In the words of Malcolm X, Education is the passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. Through withstanding these grueling past four years, we have been prepared for capturing that future. I am confident and honored to know that I am standing amongst the next prime ministers, lawyers, great writers, doctors, and professors of tomorrow. Our degrees are not a testament to the knowledge we have attained but rather to the promise and responsibility of what we will accomplish with this great privilege. This past year, we all witnessed a nation make a grave mistake in denying an extremely qualified, competent, and powerful woman her rightful position as a world leader. In the words of this woman, I believe that the rights of women and girls is the unfinished business of the 21st century. It is up to us to ensure that the injustices of the past and present do not dictate the path of the future. So yes, it is important that we look back to leaders of the past for inspiration for revolution. However, it is these exact leaders who have failed to solve the wrongs of today. I would like to quote G.D. Anderson, a poet born and raised in our very own Montreal, in stating, feminism isn't about making women strong. Women are already strong. It's about changing the way the world perceives that strength. Let's finish the business of the 21st century class of 2017 and become the generation of change that will attain gender equality once and for all. However, there is so much more unfinished business to which we must attend. The current injustices against Canadian Indigenous peoples must be put to rest once and for all. The 
the lack of mental health care and significant stigma surrounding those suffering from these invisible diseases should be addressed. Issues of racism, global inequality, oppression, and intolerance of diversity must be abolished. And what about the injustices against our planet? It is our responsibility to end the needless exploitation of natural resources, the poisoning of our waters, and the pollution of the air we breathe. Not only is this an ab abuse, a violation of our privileges, it is a crime against future generations. This degree has not only exposed us to the world of academia, but it has provided us with the knowledge and privilege of a platform for change. So ask yourselves, graduates, what change will you stand for? Felicitations, congratulations, class of 2017.